This is a University of Otago podcast. Hello and welcome to Otago University Vote Chat 2011. Vote Chat is a series of conversations with uh, politicians coming on campus to tell us why we should vote for them and tell us a bit about their backgrounds, their personal ideologies, politics, etc. We're filming this at the media production studios on campus um, in front of a live audience. So we're trying to do things a bit differently. This is being live streamed out on the internet. It's also being uh, filmed for YouTube where people can watch it there. Also for downloading as a podcast on iTunes. And of course, we're doing it on the Twitter sphere as well. We've got an official Otago University politics department Twitterer in the audience um, speaking basically for our guest today. But if anyone wants to ask questions from within the room or the wider Twitter sphere, they can do so using the hashtag OUVoteChat2011. Okay, so today we've got uh, someone who's fast rising up the ranks of the National Party, sort of talked about as maybe even a, a future National Party leader or maybe Prime Minister. He's certainly got a, a impressive career already, even though he's only about 35. He um, has got a politics degree and a law degree, and he has worked as a litigation lawyer for Kensington Swan. He's um, been a senior Crown Prosecutor in the District and High Courts. He's even studied at Oxford University, London School of Economics, and worked briefly, I think, at the British Parliament, but now he is a MP on his own, well not on his own, but in his own right, in the New Zealand Parliament, and he's the MP for Tauranga, Simon Bridges. Welcome, Simon. Good afternoon, good to be here. Okay, well, firstly, it's great to have you here, <laughs> but you shouldn't really be here. Yeah, really, yeah, yeah. Well, shouldn't you be in Tauranga, Look, I, getting oil off the beaches yeah. or getting oil well, off that ship? It's funny you say that, because I, I did have some pangs of guilt, and Michael and I uh, uh, talked about whether I should, should be here. But actually, we're two weeks on, and I don't want to underplay the seriousness of what's happening yeah. in, in Tauranga. It's, it is very serious, right? And, uh, you know, the boat's in a precarious situation. Um, they are getting oil off at the moment. But there's also a sense with which, actually, and I've you know, thought a lot about this and talked with a lot of people in Tauranga, life has to go on. And actually, um, one of the marketing campaigns, I think, that will come out of the Chamber of Commerce and so on, is that it is business as usual. We're open for business. You know, because for most people, in terms of their jobs, tourism will be affected to some extent, fisheries, but we've got to get on with So things. is this kind of like a vote of confidence in Tauranga that you're getting away from there because yes, the, the situation's... Extent being handled and... Look, to some extent... Or I mean, did you just want a hol holiday in sunny Dunedin? <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been going on to Michael Woodhouse many times, mate. This is not sunny, eh? And it's <laughs> yeah. um, quite cold, but, but that's okay. No, it's good to be here. Okay, very good. But your government has stuffed up, hasn't it? They've dropped the ball on this one. Um, I mean, uh, isn't it a big problem in your election campaign at the moment that this is come in there? I mean, in terms of the politics, I've deliberately tried not to think about it in that sense, right? Yeah. Because I just think we've got to do what's right. We've got to follow the expert views and, mm. and, and get on with doing the right thing. Um, a person, my personal view on the politics of this um, at a local level is, look, those people who want to see National as the saviours who've done everything right will still see it that way. Those who think, you know, oh, right, that they're all bad will still see it that way, right? right. So I don't actually see it as a changer in any direction. Yeah, but there, there's a lot of undecided voters at the moment who are looking for a government of competency and um, this government has been very strong on competency I think and you know a perception of Correct. competency but now that is being eroded by things like this and a few other you know, credit downgrades and so forth so isn't that going to kind of all compound and lead to this idea that maybe you guys aren't as smart as you Look, I, well, I think we are, but <laughs> I certainly accept your point that, look, in perception terms, the way the, some elements of the media have played it out, yeah. there is that. But, I mean, I can tell you just from my personal yeah. experience of this crisis, if you like, yeah. from the day it happened, we were on to okay. it. I was talking with Stephen Joyce. Things were happening. Right. Actually, people from Maritime New Zealand were on the vessel doing things. Right. So I'm convinced in my own mind yeah. nothing could have been done quicker than it has been. So, so take us to the, back to the day that it all mm. unfolded. It was early in the morning, wasn't it, on mm. Wednesday? Mm. Something 2 a.m. Like, 2 a.m. Mm. So how did it unfold for you? So I was still sleeping, but look, I yep. heard it about in the morning yep. um, and uh, had conversations with Stephen Joyce about it, with Tony yeah, Roll, the you other were, local. You were in the electorate at that stage? or were you No, we were in Parliament. See, oh, okay. this was the last week of Parliament. Oh, yes, yeah. 
Um, so Wednesday, one more day of Parliament. We were, he'd been having briefings for Maritime New Zealand. Um, we were all very clear on the seriousness. We were also very clear that the export experts knew what they were doing and were doing everything they absolutely could. They had the resources they needed. Mm. Now, it's frustrating, right? And if you look at my electorate, um, it's a bit like uh, the grieving process. You know, yeah. I think people on the ground, me included, have gone through every aspect of Greece, anger, frustration, actually now probably to a point of kind of, um, we are where we are and we've got to get on with it. But you must be a bit frightened by this anger because I think there is, yeah, it's still anger out there. It hasn't actually gone on to any other stages for some people. And they'll be angry at, at, at you guys. There's protests don't, today, isn't there? I, I don't think so. So, and I'm not just saying that to you, look, in terms of, I mean, we've had a number of public meetings, right? Yeah. So let me run you through that. Yeah. First public meeting yeah. I chaired at Taronga Boys College, look, 400 people capacity. Um, uh, there, there were protests there. I mean, the first question that I took was from Mike Smith, of course, Maori activist. Um, yep. You know, angry, had a yep. Greenpeace perspective. Mm. Um, so a sort of a difference in dichotomy there, if you like, between locals and actually out of town is coming in with, yeah, I agree. Anger. Now, this week I've had public meetings again, we're down to 20, 30 people coming to those. Because I think actually the information has really stepped up, people have understood the complexity of this, okay. they've understood that things are being done. Okay, what about the arguments that the shipping industry is too deregulated, we're letting in these foreign flagships mm. and you know it's um, this was an accident waiting to happen and all the cliches, mm. uh, is there anything in that? Yeah. Look, frankly, I don't know. Right, I don't know. I, I, I would never. I'm not a maritime expert. I don't claim to understand all these flags of convenience yeah. type arguments. What I do think is there's no question we're going to need to have some kind of whether it's a royal commission or what it is yeah. inquiry. We yeah, these hard questions. Uh, answered. I certainly don't go along with the line that look um, somehow what has happened with a container ship carrying meat and uh, you know wine and so on somehow that flows on to oil exploration. I don't buy that. But in terms of those other sort of hard questions you've asked, yeah, we need to ask and answer them. Okay. I mean, this does change politics to some degree, you know, whether we like it or not. And we're, there might be some beneficiaries from this in the political scene. What, what about the Greens? Do you think they're going to get any? Yeah. Uh, any sort of movement out of this? Look, certainly I've seen uh, Green MPs um, who at personal level I get on well with yeah. um, in Tauranga. Yeah. You know, um, every day there's been, a, seems to be a different Green yeah. there. So yeah, they've been uh, there. Is, is that grandstanding or do you think that's opportunism? I'm just interested in this yeah. sort of balance. Yeah. Should MPs be there doing stuff or is it, you know, is it sort of getting into electioneering in your view? Oh, look, I certainly don't criticise them for being there. I think we have got a party um, where green issues are said to be your top priority. Yeah. If they weren't there, look, that would be a bit strange. Yeah. I mean, this is an environmental yeah. issue. So I accept that. Whether it's grandstanding, look, other people can judge that. I certainly, in my household, we got a pamphlet from the Greens a few days afterwards. Um, and so I think there is that political aspect there. But yeah. Look, good on them. I don't criticise them for being a toe wrong. No. I, I have a question about okay. this. Um, you said you dismissed before the argument that, um, like, the flow on, you know, mm. the people talking about this and then comparing it to mm. deep sea oil exploration and mm. things like. The National Party seem to be really trying to distance that, but mm. I mean, they're both oil and it's both the ocean and mm. the idea mm. that they're not the same is kind of. Yeah. Well, let me run you through that. I hear that, and I also understand why this is so sort of viscerally emotional for people, right? And look, there's no question it's a serious situation. 350 tonnes or thereabouts have come off of oil. But I think, you know, what you've got here ultimately is a container ship that has oil on it for fuel, actually the way our cars do, and so many other things probably in this, in this room. I mean, rare earth metals and the cameras and so on. So I do think there is a distinction between saying here is actually before this disaster, most of us would have said a really environmental way to get goods from one place to another in a vessel to jump into the conclusion that somehow oil exploration um, is linked in with this. I don't, I don't get that. It's more about our capacity to that. deal with an accident, though. That's the argument. Like the, the, the pe people criticising the argument make that argument. But mm -hmm. what the Green Party and Greenpeace are actually saying is that the point is that we don't, as a nation, have a capacity to deal with the kind of Gulf mm -hmm. situation or even, well, this situation. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a number of things about that, right? Again, I understand the point, and it probably is, not probably, it's definitely something that some kind of inquiry should be looking at in the fullness of time. But on that point, you know, what I'm led to believe 
is the last time we had something that came close to this was 10 years ago as a country. Actually, it was very different. This has been scaled up to a 9 out of 10 complexity kind of a scenario. I don't think it's reasonable for, to, to expect that we suddenly have the experts on hand in New Zealand to be dealing with these things sort of the first hour, right, who are just going to get on and understand the complexity of this. Look, we're just not going to, actually. Okay, are there any more opinions or questions before we move on? I mean, I think we probably will come back to 